So what's up guys and welcome to episode one of the Essential Film Gear. So basically I've come up with this new series to showcase what I reckon is the absolute essential gear you need for making high quality videos. Basically it'll be a mix between doing reviews of different types of gear and then also tips into how to get the most out of that gear that I'm showing you. And the idea is that I'll contribute a new video to this series once every little while. So it's not going to be a weekly thing um, but just more so when I feel like doing something a little bit different. So to kick off episode number one, we're going to be talking about one of, if not the most important pieces of gear you need to consider if you want to make that step up from cheap and amateur filmmaking to professional and dope, and that is audio. Now there is a buttload of different audio gear you can and probably should get, but given we're talking about essentials, I reckon there's really only one piece of gear you definitely need to get, and that is a digital audio recorder, and the one that I absolutely recommend because it's the one I have been using for over three years now, so I can testify to its absolute beastliness, is the Zoom H4n audio recorder. Now there's a good chance that any of the recording devices manufactured by Zoom will probably do a decent job, and I can guarantee the recorders of a higher price bracket by Zoom will definitely have all the capabilities and more of the H4n, but the reason I love this one is because of these two bad boys. These are two inbuilt condenser microphones that are arranged in an XY stereo position, and the quality of audio you can get from these bad boys are epic. I actually use these built-in mics for all my narration in my YouTube videos. So what you're listening to right now is being recorded using these stereo mics, and I have just started recently using them in my on-screen shots too. So right now you can tell the audio is pretty shoddy, and that's because it's coming directly from my onboard DSLR microphone. But if we switch over to the Zoom H4n, instantly you can tell how much of a difference that makes. And I'm telling you right now, you can get your image looking as crispy and sexy as you want, but if you've got this audio over the top of it, it absolutely takes away the beauty and professionalism of your shot. Now I'm keen to show you the setup that I work with because I reckon it's dead simple yet massively effective. So for 90% of my setups with the H4n, the main piece of support gear that is absolutely invaluable is this. It's actually a microphone stand clip adapter and I don't actually think these come with the zooms anymore so I'll put the link in the description below. But this little nifty adapter can probably find its way into one of the essentials you need along with the zoom. So when I'm recording my voiceovers, it's really simple. I have the zoom attached to the mic stand clip adapter and depending on the day, I'll usually just plonk the recorder on my desk, plug in my headphones, set my volume and record. Now I live in a pretty echoey apartment due to all the floorboards in every single room. And so generally what I do is I grab a towel or a blanket or anything that I can just drape over my head and partly over the recorder um, to kind of act as a noise or reverb dampener. And so obviously right now you're hearing the audio without the blanket over my head and now you're hearing it with the blanket over my head and hear how much of a difference that makes. And for my on-screen shots, I have a really simple microphone stand and with the zoom attached to that microphone stand clip adapter and then on the stand, I position it as close to my mouth as possible without getting in the shot and then swivel the zoom a bit so that it's facing towards my mouth and then boom, we're good to go. Now, I only started doing this technique really recently for these shots and previously you might've noticed, I actually used a lapel microphone, but I've found that using this new technique actually provides for cleaner audio and just gives me more flexibility to move my hands about without worrying that the lapel is going to slide on my shirt. Now, similar to when I record my voiceovers, because I'm usually in an echoey room, I do a bit of improvising with some blankets and towels and jackets, just kind of laying across chairs and, and my tripod in front of me. And that usually just helps minimize the reverb in the room. Now, obviously what I've just mentioned to you is basically how I use the H4n for filming my YouTube videos, but I really quickly want to chat about some other functions this recording device has. Firstly, and this was another big buying point for me, the two XLR inputs on the bottom of the H4n. So where these will definitely come in handy is if you're at an event like a wedding and you've got an XLR feed coming from an audio desk, boom, straight in and you're set to go. You might also want to upgrade to a proper boom microphone for your videos in the future. And so no worries there, you're already set to go. The H4n can also provide phantom power, which a lot of video microphones need. So you're covered in that department too. In addition to that, there is a secondary input on the back of the recorder for plugging in any 1 8 inch external microphone, which is most cheap lapel mics or a line signal if you want. And this is where I plug my lapel in when using it. And the device intuitively switches the input from the onboard stereo mics to the external microphone or input. Another feature I love is the fact that you can record four channels at any given time, simply by jumping into settings and changing to the four channel recorder mode. So that feature makes this a perfect recording device for events in particular. 
Now in terms of the nitty gritty details, the device runs on two AA batteries and whilst I've never done an official battery check on this thing, I can tell you now this thing lasts plenty long enough. Zoom claims on its website that it has over 6 hours of operation time on standard mode and a whopping 11 hours in stamina mode. That is more than enough for pretty much any event you'll ever need it for, especially if you carry a pack of spare AA's with you. The H4N records onto SD cards and I just stick a cheap 2GB Kingston SD card in there, which I've used for years. And because you're only recording audio, not only will you never have any troubles, you'll be able to record for hours due to the small amount of space the files take up. Now I know some of you might be watching this thinking, hang on, shouldn't I first get myself a decent standalone microphone, something like a Rode video mic or something similar before investing in the Zoom H4N? Well, yes you can, but what I'm telling you is, I reckon you're gonna find yourself wanting a portable audio recording device in the future anyway, even if you do have a decent standalone mic. Because unless you're happy standing really close to your DSLR to get you know good quality audio, or if you're satisfied with getting distant sounding audio, which just quietly you shouldn't be, then you're gonna want a portable audio recording device anyway, so you can get your microphone as close to the action as possible. And with the quality of the microphones that are on top of the Zoom H4n, I reckon you're gonna get just as good audio quality, if not better in some cases, than a lot of dedicated video microphones in this similar price category. So what I'm telling you is, just cut out the middleman, go straight for the Zoom H4n, because if you're seriously about filmmaking, I can guarantee that you're gonna want one of these portable audio recording devices in the future anyway. So what I'm telling you is, just make your first investment of you know audio gear, the Zoom H4n. Now before I wrap up this episode, I wanna quickly mention one last feature that is just a massive bonus as well. The H4n can actually act as a USB audio interface. Simply plug in the USB adapter and when the screen comes on, select audio interface. Then open your DAW of choice, select it as the input and there you have it. So you can either record using the stereo microphones on the top or you can plug an XLR microphone in and use that. You can even plug an instrument cable in, so an electric guitar, bass or even an acoustic guitar that has a preamp. Now you can get these for around $200 on Amazon and I'll have the link below, but before you think, come on man, that's a bit steep, think about what you get for this price. You get a really decent pair of condenser microphones, you get two XLR or quarter inch inputs that you can record, and you get a freaking USB audio interface. Plus there's so many more features that I haven't even mentioned, so if that isn't bang for your buck, I don't know what is. Also, here's a quick list of accessories you want to get along with your Zoom H4n. You want to grab that microphone stand clip adapter that I already mentioned, as well as a microphone stand, a windsock of some sort, a travel carrier, a USB cable, and an SD card. And I'll put a link to the ones that I recommend below. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoy this series, and if you have any suggestions for essential film gear that I should include, feel free to put them in the comments below. But thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.